guys, welcome back. It's Don Wazzy here, and today I'm going to be up updating my Easy Mode Magicka Sorcerer Veteran Maelstrom Arena build for the Dragon Bones DLC. So, without further ado, we are going to go over the stats. So, our fully buff stats are 42,000 Magicka, 16.7 thousand health, 10 thousand stamina, 2,542 spell damage. 49.5% crit and 1457 Magicka recovery. We have 61 points into Magicka and 3 points into health. The Mundestorm we are using is the Lover, which increases your spell and physical penetration by 4169. And the food we are using is Witch Mother's Potent Brew. If you feel your health is a bit too low, then I would suggest either taking points out of Magicka and putting them into health or if you're loaded on the game then I would suggest instead of using Witch Mother's Potent Brew using the Clockwork Citrus Filet which it gives you a slight little it gives you a little bit more health and a little bit more Magicka and some health recovery as well so that's nice but uh, Please take note that they do take perfect raw, so they are very expensive. Right, now I'm going to show you the consumables. Obviously the food we're using is Witch Mother's Potent Brew, which is very cheap, easy to get. You can buy it on Guild Traders. The potions we are using are a bit more expensive, but I find them extremely useful, especially in places like Maelstrom Arena. So... The potions we're using are Essence of Spell Critical, which grant Major Prophecy, which gives you 2,191 Spell Critical. So that gives you around about 10% Spell Crit for 47.6 seconds, which with the Medicinal Use Passive in Alchemy is pretty much it's up all the time if you use your potions off of cooldown. Uh, the unique thing about these potions is they restore 8,369 health immediately. So it's kind of like a burst heal. So if you're in a sticky situation where you maybe you're panicking or um, power surge has not healed you, just something like that, you don't have dots down for power surge to heal you, then you can just pop this and it'll give you a big chunk of health back. Also gives major fortitude, which is not very important, but it's still more stats, so it helps, which increases health recovery by 20% for 47.6 seconds. And also restores 7,582 Magicka and grants Major Intellect, which increases your Magicka recovery by 20% for 47.6 seconds. Right, so now we're going to go over the gear. We have, on the front bar, we have an Inferno Staff of the Infallible Aether, which is infused. And we are running a Shock Enchant on that. Shocking chants are, without a doubt, the best for solo play. So, it's basically a no-brainer to have a shocking chant. On the back bar, we are using a Maelstrom Lightning Staff infused with a weapon and spell damage enchant. You can use Nernhorn Deer or Infused. I just found Infused to be the best in Maelstrom for me. So, it is entirely up to you what you use there. If you do not have a Maelstrom Staff, Obviously, if you're just farming Maelstrom for the weapons, then I would suggest either using another Infallible Aether um, Lightning Staff on the back bar if you have one, or a random crafted staff uh, just in Infused. The, it, having the Maelstrom Staff does help a lot, but this build works with or without a Maelstrom Staff. Also, if you don't have an Infallible Aether Staff for your front bar either, then I would suggest, again, another random crafted staff. So, we are using 5-piece Necropotence on the body and 2-piece Ice Heart, the, which is the monster set. Everything is Divines and everything is enchanted with Maximum Magicka. For the jewellery, we have 3-piece Infallible Aether, so that's 4-piece Infallible Aether active on the front bar, which... All them are enchanted with spell damage enchants. If you're feeling you're struggling with sustain, then I would swap out one for one spell damage enchantment 
for a magical recovery enchantment. So now you're wondering why we're not using Moon Dancer. Um, the reason we're not using Moon Dancer is because as a pet sock, we have very low crit as it is. So the tiniest bit of crit, the the tiniest bit more crit helps towards proccing the monster set, which is the the like the whole reason of the build. And I found that. I found that um, even with a monster set that doesn't do that much damage, the sorcerer is still very over, like it's still very very strong. So the reason we're using this monster set, I've explained it before in previous videos, and as as always, I think this monster set is highly underrated. So for the one piece, you get eight hundred and thirteen spell critical. And for the two-piece, it's absolutely awesome, I think. When you deal critical damage, you have a 20% chance to gain a damage shield that absorbs 8,400 damage for 6 seconds. While the damage shield holds, you deal uh, 1,030 frost damage to all enemies within 5 meters of you every 1 second. This effect can occur every 6 seconds. So basically, every 6 seconds, you're going to get a shield because obviously with all your damage over times down, uh, and stuff like that you will you're more than likely going to prop this every six seconds and it's a free shield so it, it makes it easier to learn maelstrom you don't have to switch to your you don't have to use your own shield as often or when you're in a situation where you've took heavy damage and this procs and you've got your shield on top of it it gives you a quite a bit of time to recuperate so now i'm just going to demonstrate the the proc rate of this especially with like dots down and stuff and dots running it's absolutely stupid there we've got a proc already straight off the bat and then again look see straight as soon as it goes off we get another proc that's that that's how much it procs it is i think it's absolutely underrated especially for solo play and with the amount of with the amount of damage we have ticking it's just i think it's it's so underrated and it, it just makes maelstrom so much easier especially for newer players anyways enough of my rant we're gonna now we're gonna go over the skills so on our front bar we have endless fury this is our execute and because because most enemies in maelstrom especially trash um except from bosses have very low health it's quite easy to kill them and obviously this is one of our main sources of sustain if an enemy is killed by this ability, you restore 4,417 4, Magicka. That goes in hand with the Destruction Staff passive as well, which I think is down here somewhere. Destruction Expert. When you kill an enemy with a Destruction Staff ability, you restore 3,600 Magicka. So if you kill an enemy with either Force Pulse or Wall of Elements and this, well, while you've got this active, uh, I do believe it gives you... Uh, both passives can proc at the same time so that's double the sustain but what i like to do is especially on trash on trash mobs so i like to dot one up say this is a portal i like to dot one up over here and then i'll just go for a heavy attack use one force pulse and then i will apply the endless fury and then force pulse him again because because of how endless fury works it kind of stays on your opponent it lingers so if you apply it before 20% health and they fall to 20% health, the extra shock damage you get will will kill the enemy. So that gives you the magic. Plus, you've used force pulse as well. So that's even more magic. So I do suggest apply it using one force pulse and then applying this and then finishing the target off. Or you can finish them off with that. It's entirely up to you. The next skill on our bar is our main spammable, which is Force Pulse. And um, it it's quite up to you which morph you use. I like to take Force Pulse for more damage because in normally enemies that need interrupting are very weak and you can kill them from range like very quick. You just need to be aware of where they are. So that's why I take Force Pulse. If you want to take Crushing Shock, it is up to you. But just do remember that certain bosses especially in the poison round the the end boss if you interrupt him 
while he's doing his shout, he will become enraged and it, it makes it very difficult to beat that boss fight when he's being interrupted. So what I would suggest if you do take Crushing Shock is on that stage specifically, just to place your dots when you're in the, when you're in the safe area and he's screaming, place your damage over times and just heavy attack him until he stops screaming, just to make sure you don't interrupt him. Right, on the next skill on our bar is the Summon Volatile Familiar, which is the pet. So here he is. He he has an ability. He has a, an ability that does massive AOE damage, and literally all you have to do is it, it, just press it and he pulsates like that. Um, the unique thing about pets in Maelstrom, I think, is that say there's a mob spot, there's a mob spawn in here, and there's a mob spawn in there. So I can place my two dots on him, Liquid Lightning and Wall of Elements, and then I can immediately heavy attack this guy that's coming over here, and both of my pets will attack him. So we've got both of my both of the pets attacking him there, and you have the dots here on the other portal, which just makes it even quicker killing enemies. So the next skill on our bar is Hardened Ward. This is our main damage shield. This is the one I recommend you take. This plus Ice Heart makes you more or less a tank. That's all I can say. And the fifth skill on our bar is the Summon Twilight Matriarch. You can take any one of the morphs. I prefer the Matriarch in Maelstrom just because most of the time I don't need to use the heal from this. I just use him for the free damage that he does on enemies. But if you are in a sticky situation and you do need a burst heal and maybe your potion's not up or you ain't got you're panicking so you ain't got damage over times down for power surge to heal you, then you can just press this press this button and it'll give you a massive heal. I believe this heal is stronger than Breath of Life. But don't quote me on that, I'm not too sure. So that's why I use that. And the ultimate on our bar is Shooting Star. I use Shooting Star because it's cheaper than the Destro, but most of the time I do use the Destro in Maelstrom. Shooting Star is just basically there for the passives in the Mage's Guild tree, for the extra magic and magical recovery. If you don't bother about that, then I would suggest using Overload. So then you can have a third bar and maybe slot a skill like let me have a look. Lightning form, Boundless Storm. You could slot Boundless Storm. You could slot um, uh, Streak for times you want to get away. Uh, dark Exchange. So Dark, it'd be Dark Conversion, I think. Yeah, Dark Conversion. You could slot that there. And obviously, you want to keep your shield and your pets on there. So obviously, you can just activate this uh, if you need sustain. Activate this so it's up and you've got more resistances and stuff like that. And then say like you're running out of Magicka, you need some more sustain, activate it. And just use your stamina and convert it into Magicka. I don't need that, personally. So I just stick with Shooting Star. Also, another good option is the Summon Storm Atronaut. Because it does really good single target damage. But again, that is entirely up to you. On our back bar, we are using Liquid Lightning which is one of the strongest damage over times in the game. Uh, this is a, it does have a long duration and it does, uh, it does, it does cost quite a bit. So you want to be tactical at to where you put this. You want to put this somewhere where there's going to be a station, a stationary enemy or something that you know is going to die really, well, die quickish or where the portal is going to spawn. So you just, you just place Liquid Lightning, place your Wall of Elements on one portal and then leave it and just let that tick away. You don't want to overcast this because it does cost quite a bit of Magicka. The next skill on our bar is Blockade of Storms. This is one of our bread and butter skills because as I saw, especially with this build, we still use off balance because, Mael because enemies in Maelstrom die so quick. Um, stuff like Stuff like Trash. Anything that's not a boss is not immune to off balance, so you can set them off balance as much as possible. Which off balance does give you 10% more damage, which is a hell of a lot, especially in AOE fights and stuff like that. Also, bosses, because bosses die so quick in Maelstrom, 
I believe, in my opinion, you benefit more from off balance than you do not having off balance, especially on a sorcerer. So the next skill on our bar is the Summon Volatile Familiar again, because you need a double slot pet. And the next skill on our bar is Power Surge. This is our main source of Major Sorcery, which increases spell damage by 20% for 33 seconds. So you're always going to want to make sure this is up, because it is a lot of damage. Also, while active, dealing a critical strike heals you for 2,500 health. This effect can occur every one second. This is probably one of the most powerful heals, self heals in the game. And it does proc literally every one second. And it, it can also crit. So make sure you always keep that up at all times. Always check your buff trackers. The next skill on our bar is the Summon Twilight Matriarch. Again, because obviously we have to double slot pets. And then the final skill on our bar is Thunderous Rage. Strongest ultimate in the game. This can also proc the Destro passive, which gives you more magicka, which contributes towards your sustain. And that's really all you need to know. So now I'm going to go over the champion points. Right. In the green tree, we have 44 in Warlord and 19 in Sprinter. But 19 in Sprinter is entirely up to you. I tend to accidentally sprint a lot in Maelstrom when I'm running between platforms or uh, when I'm on the last boss and I'm at the top and I'm trying to sprint for the, the wall so I don't get knocked off. So I like to put some points in Sprinter so I don't waste all my stamina. We have 75 in Arcanist and 64 in Tenacity. Because we don't do as many heavy attacks, you don't need as much in Tenacity so you could probably put less in there. Uh, that would again be entirely up to you. I have 75 in Arcanist because I believe anything over 75 is an absolute waste because um, the extra 25 points only get you 1% and I'd rather put them elsewhere like Sprinter, Warlord or Tumbling or Shadow Ward. So the next is we have 28 into Tumbling and 10 into Shadow Ward. Just remember that Shadow Ward, um, I still believe it does not suffer from jump points. So what you see is what you get. So if you see there I've got 4.78%, 4 I will get 4.78% reduction of block. And we have 28 points into Tumbling. If you want, you could probably take points out of Tenacity or points out of Sprinter if you don't suffer with the problem of sprinting and put more into Tumbling and Shadow Ward. But this is how I like it. As I said before, the red, the red and the green trees are more of personal preference. So now we're going to go over to, to the most important tree, which is the blue tree. We have 40 into Elfborn, 56 into Elemental Expert, 29 into Spell Erosion. We have 40 into Master at Arms and 75 points into Thermitage. For the red tree, we have 61 points into Ironclad. 16 points into Spell Shield, 56 points into Hardy and Elemental Defender, and 40 points into Thick Skinned. And I have 11 points into Expert Defender, just because there are a lot of melee adds that do like light and heavy attacks on you, and sometimes it can cause you death, because if they hit you with one of them and then you get hit by something else uh, really quick, um, you, you can take a lot of damage from that and may possibly be one shot so that's why I like to put some points in here if you want you don't have to have as many points into spell shield or thick skinned and you can pump bastion up but I, I don't feel that's needed especially with having that ice art set and the massive shields from the sorcerer already because obviously we're wearing the necropotent set so now I'm going to go over some useful passives um, I will have a table of contents in the description for anyone who wants to skip by this bit. So, you're going to want all the da Dark Magic passives. You're going to want all the Daedric Summoning passives. And you're going to want all the Storm Calling passives. You're going to want the Destruction Staff passives, every single one of them. Light Armor passives. In Medium Armor, you're going to want Wind Walker because it increases your stamina recovery by 4% per piece of medium armor equipped. 
and because we're running five one one, which is five light, one medium, one heavy, we ben we get four percent from that bonus. Which extra stamina recovery is very useful in Maelstrom, I believe. Even if it's just a little bit, stamina plays such a heavy part in Maelstrom. As when it comes to roll dodging, blocking and stuff like that. Also, in heavy armor, we take the resolve, constitution and juggernaut passives just for some extra resistance, some extra max health and extra health recovery and bit of sustain when you take damage. In the fighters guild passives, I do take banish the wicked because you generate nine ultimate when you kill an undead daedra or werewolf and there is quite a quite a lot of that in maelstrom arena uh, you want to take all the mages guild passives both of the undaunted passives all of your um racial passives which i mentioned it before but i am a high elf high elf is without a doubt the best class the best race for the magic sorcerer Especially if you're using lightning. If you're using double fire, then possibly dark health will be better. And last but not least is the alchemy passive. Medicinal use. This is by far the most important passive, I believe. Well, one of the most important passives. Because with this passive, you can effectively keep the effects up from your potions 100% of the time if you are using using potions off of cooldown also i there is another passive that i want to mention i don't have it on my um on my magicka sorcery because i do have two magicka sorcerers and this is the one i use for my vma builds which i do need to get provisioning but if you do have provisioning at level 50 i would suggest getting these two um Gormand and I think it's Gormand yeah Gormand and Connoisseur because especially if you're, if you're using the Clockwork Citrus Filly uh, this passive adds a lot of time to your food and drink these two passives so because the Clockwork Citrus Filly is very expensive it just gives you a little bit more time if you're not then you don't need to waste the skill points on that so it's entirely up to you in terms of rotation I don't believe like I've said in previous videos, I don't believe you need a rotation in Maelstrom Arena because Maelstrom Arena is all about burst damage. So all I would do in all I would do is obviously keep my buffs up, make my make sure my potions going, and say this is a portal spawn. All I would do then is place my two ground dots on that portal, and then say this centurion is another portal so i'd place my two ground dots i'd quick, quickly switch go for a heavy attack for him and then all i would do is spam him until he's dead obviously we've got the pets attacking him as well and then when he dies switch back if this guy is not dead then just execute him or if there's another one you can focus on that and that's basically all i do in maelstrom especially when you're like you need to learn to do this, it makes Maelstrom a lot easier, knowing where the ads spawn and stuff like that. So now I'm going to go and do the first round of Maelstrom, just to, as I always do, just to showcase how I utilise this build. So now we're going to travel into Maelstrom. So here we are in Maelstrom Arena and I have not started the round yet. Um, normally what you'd want to do is make sure all your gear is... Uh, repaired and make sure your food is recently activated and then jump in i know where the portals are going to spawn so i can just throw my dots down straight away so i know one's going to be round about here so i know this portal is going to spawn here i'll just reapply them dots and then switch to the next guy as you can see he died very quick before i could even put my execute on him so all I'm doing is just same rinse and repeat, sticking my dots down. Obviously I didn't execute him. But as you can see, just getting magic back. I know a boss is going to spawn here. So I'm going to drop my Destral on him and maybe a Wall of Elements. I should have blocked that, but it's not a big deal. And I'm just going to finish him off. 
and then finish the rest of them off. And then now I'm going to stand here because I know Portal's going to spawn here and the, the main boss will spawn there and I want to be as close as possible to him. And it's just the same, same thing again. Place your dots down, focus on someone else. Finish them off and carry on. You just want to keep rotating to avoid this mechanic here and keep your dots up in between round. Um, keep your buffs up in between round and potions. Also make sure you light weaving. And it's just same again. Stay at the portals, keep your dots up, keep your buffs up. And I like to save my ultimate for the final rounds. If you feel like if you feel like you can use your ultimate and get it back before the boss round, then feel free to use it. And just same again, always. Keeping my buffs up, focusing on a different target. Placing my execute when he's nearly dead, just so that sends him over the top and getting that magic back. Always, you always need to be aware of your surroundings in Maelstrom. As you can see, I've, I've not needed to use my shield barely at all. I'll just finish this guy off. Right. I like to reapply my buffs very early. So I'm going to finish these two off before the big guy actually comes so I can focus on him. I've sent him off balance, but normally you would do a move that you'd have to block or roll dodge. So now the big boss is here, you want to get your buffs up, get your dots down, activate your Destro ult, and then you just want to spam him. And then halfway through, reapply your dots. And keep spamming him, he's going to port soon. So all you want to do here is just reapply your dots and use your execute. And it's as easy as that. As you can see, the damage is not that bad. We did manage to get him to about 12% when he ported. Maybe a little less. So, yeah. Overall, I think this build is very strong and very survivable. As you can see, I did not, I did not need to use my shield once in that round. That's how strong the build is. So, if you enjoy this build, guys, um, please leave me a like. Please subscribe. And if it, there's anything I missed out, leave it in the comments. There will be links below to my Facebook, Twitter, and my Discord. Which, Discord is the easiest way to contact me. We also have a guild, which will be in the... The link will be in the description to the guild information. So, we have guild chats in Discord for different guilds. It is a cross-platform guild. We do have guilds on nearly every platform, except from PC EU, which we will be working, that, working on that in the future. Also, if you do want to contact me, please join our Discord. We have a very friendly group of people on there. I think we have about 150 people there now. We have knowledge about absolutely every class so if it's not me that's giving you information on classes it will be someone from the community also please remember that we do have a giveaway still going until thursday uh, at 7 pm so please watch the video of the giveaway that link will also be in the description and i hope you enjoyed i hope the build helps and please comment with your opinions of the build and if if the build helped you because i really i really really like to I, I like to hear about people that have successfully completed maelstrom with my build and if it helped them or not anyways guys i will see you in the next one thanks guys bye